good morning so today we are going to discuss new module electrochemistry so in electrochemistry we are going to discuss electrochemical cells so electrochemistry is the branch of chemistry which deals with electrochemical cells especially redox reactions so most of you might have studied this electrochemistry in your plus 1 or plus 2 so electrochemistry as discussed as i told earlier it's a branch of chemistry where it involves the loss that is oxidation and reduction losing of electrons or gaining of electrons so electrochemistry mainly depends upon electrochemical cells so now in today's discussion let us see what are these electrochemical cells what is oxidation what is reduction and few terms what is free energy what is entropy right so let us discuss one by one electrochemical cells are devices which convert electrical energy into chemical energy or chemical energy into electrical energy i repeat electrochemical cells are the devices which convert chemical energy into electrical energy or electrical energy into chemical energy it can also be told as the cells which convert or the devices which convert chemical energy into electrical energy and vice versa there are mainly two types of galvanic uh, electrochemical cells and they are galvanic cells and electrolytic cells so galvanic cells are the devices which convert electrical en chemical energy into electrical energy and whereas electrolytic cells are the devices which by virtue of chemical energy or by virtue of electrical energy some electrical changes are brought about so the best example for galvanic cell is the daniel cell and the best example for electrolytic cell is electrolytic process or electrolysis process in galvanic cell what is galvanic cell it is a device where chemical energy is converted into electrical energy so in galvanic cell anode is negative cathode is positive the example is daniel cell Electrolytic cell is a device by virtue of electrical energy, some chemical changes are brought about. For example, if we consider electrolysis process, so we'll have an anode, we'll have a cathode. So anode will be impure metal, cathode will be pure metal. So when you pass the current, what happens? Electrolysis takes place and the impure it is present in the anode will get settled at the bottom of the anode called as anode mud the pure metal will move towards the cathode. So when will this occur? Only when you pass the electric current. So when you pass the current, some chemical changes occurs. So this is called as, this is called as electrolytic cell. So the galvanic cell, example, Daniel cell and uh, electrolytic cell, example, are electrolysis process. We are not going to discuss much about the electrolytic cell in our discussion. We are going to deal only about galvanic cell. So in this module and also in the next module, we have only galvanic cells, the reactions considering galvanic cells. Okay. So as discussed, so these are the differences. Okay. So reactions in galvanic cells are spontaneous, whereas the electrolytic cell is non-spontaneous. So the best example for galvanic cell, as discussed, it is Daniel cell. What is Daniel cell? So Daniel cell is a cell where uh, Daniel cell contains zinc electrode dipped in zinc dipped in zinc sulfate copper electrode dipped in copper sulfate solution so these both are connected through a salt bridge and to maintain electrical neutrality so zinc dipped in zinc sulfate solution copper dipped in copper sulfate solution where these solutions are connected through the salt bridge a zinc electrode and copper electrode connected through the voltmeter so now Zinc dipped in zinc sulfate forms a half cell. Copper dipped in copper sulfate forms a another half cell. So any metal dipped in its own salt solution, any metal dipped in its own salt solution acts as a half cell. Any metal dipped in its own salt solution acts as a half cell. So we have two half cells here near the Daniel cell. One is zinc half cell, other one is copper half cell. So zinc half cell is connected to copper half cell through salt bridge and connected to voltmeter. The salt bridge is there in order to maintain electrical neutrality. Right. So now 
what happens when zinc is dipped in zinc sulfate when zinc is dipped in zinc sulfate solution at zinc zinc undergoes oxidation at zinc zinc undergoes oxidation to give two electrons zinc undergoes oxidation to liberate two electrons zinc will liberate undergoes oxidation to give you zn2 plus plus two electrons so at copper copper undergoes reduction so these electrons will move towards so these electrons will move towards from here it will move from zinc it will move towards the cathode okay and it will come to towards the uh, cathode so here what will happen is copper cu2 plus so cu2 plus will accept two electrons cu2 plus will accept two electrons to give cu cu2 plus will accept two electrons to give cu so now here at zinc oxidation occurs and at copper reduction occurs so zinc will donate two electrons at zinc will undergo oxidation so zinc will give two electrons to form the n2 plus so these electrons will move towards the copper and here in copper sulfate copper in the form of cu2 plus and so4 2 minus the cu2 plus will accept the two electrons and get reduced to cu so loss of electrons zinc is losing two electrons so loss of electrons is called as oxidation gain of electrons is called as reduction so loss of electrons is called as oxidation gain of electrons is called as reduction okay so now as per iu pack the electrode where the electrode where oxidation occurs is termed as anode and the electrode where reduction occurs is termed as cathode the electrode so here at zinc oxidation is occurring so zinc is losing two electrons so loss of electrons is called as oxidation so at zinc at uh, zinc electrode two electrons are lost right so this is called as anode at copper two electrons are accepted so this is called as cathode so as per iu pack the electrode where oxidation occurs it is named as anode and the electrode reduction occurs is termed as cathode so now the question is what is the charge of anode and cathode so as per iu pack so anode is negatively charged and cathode is positively charged so this can be also be represented so the representation is given here so this cell this salt bridge whatever salt bridge you have here this salt bridge is written by two vertical lines can you see here so left hand side you're going to write the left hand side you're going to write left hand side you're going to write the anode right hand side you're going to write the cathode so what is the anodic reaction zn is giving zn2 plus so write zn here so instead of arrow mark put a instead of arrow mark put a slash and write znso4 or zn2 plus so here what do you have cu2 plus right cu2 plus or write the electrolyte here that is cathode instead of arrow mark put a slash and write cu so you can write the zn sulfate uh, zinc sulfate solution itself or the metal ions which are it is donating right so in the the cell can be represented as the salt bridge is given as what we are going to write the salt bridge as two vertical line left hand side we are going to write the anode right hand side we are going to write the cathode okay this is how the cell is represented so whenever a metal is given so some potential is developed so how the potential is developed so whenever a metal is dipped in its own salt solution so what happens it is having a natural tendency to either lose electron or gain electron so due to this the metal gains some potential this potential is called as electrode potential i'll just explain so we have zinc here you're taking zinc here so zinc is dipped in zinc sulfate solution okay this is zinc and this is zinc sulfate solution so what will happen so zn will donate lose electrons to give you zn2 plus and two electrons so what happens here these electrons will be on the surface of the electrode because it is not connected to anything right so whereas the zn2 plus will be inside the solution so these negative charges will attract the positive charges these negative charges will attract the positive charges so what will happen it should get neutralized but it is not getting 
neutralized it should get neutralized but it is not getting neutralized so this negative and positive charges will be on the surface it will be on the metal solution interface so due to that it will develop some force of attraction it will develop some force of attraction okay giving rise to the electrode a overall potential if you take north pole and south pole of the uh, magnet what will happen it will get attracted you can feel that if you take north pole and no or north pole it will what move away right so you can feel the force that magnetic field similarly here negative and positive signs will attract that force so the overall force gives some potential to the electrode that is called as electrode potential so if the same electrode potential is measured at some standard temperature and pressure and at one molar concentration of the solution here then it is called as it is called as standard electrode potential okay so now let us see uh, there are few terms involved here energy free energy and entropy so you know anything any uh, energy is a substance associated with definite uh, amount of energy so which might be energy might be internal energy or it might be external energy so any energy which can be converted into usable form of work is known as free energy so what is entropy so entropy is randomness or disorderness of the system so you know that solid uh, ice from solid to liquid entropy increases from liquid to gas entropy will increase so this will be understood better the entropy concept will be understood better in the video which we play here now so this here will understand the entropy uh, video better what is entropy the concept of entropy will understood uh, better here there's a concept that's crucial to chemistry and physics it helps explain why physical processes go one way and not the other why ice melts why cream spreads in coffee why air leaks out of a punctured tire it's entropy and it's notoriously difficult to wrap our heads around entropy is often described as a measurement of disorder that's a convenient image, but it's unfortunately misleading. For example, which is more disordered, a cup of crushed ice or a glass of room temperature water? Most people would say the ice, but that actually has lower entropy. So here's another way of thinking about it, through probability. This may be trickier to understand, but take the time to internalize it and you'll have a much better understanding of entropy. Consider two small solids, which are comprised of six atomic bonds each. In this model, the energy in each solid is stored in the bonds. Those can be thought of as simple containers, which can hold indivisible units of energy, known as quanta. The more energy a solid has, the hotter it is. It turns out that there are numerous ways that the energy can be distributed in the two solids and still have the same total energy in each. Each of these options is called a microstate. For six quanta of energy in solid A and two in solid B, there are 9,702 microstates. Of course, there are other ways our eight quanta of energy can be arranged. For example, all of the energy could be in solid A and none in B, or half in A and half in B. If we assume that each microstate is equally likely, we can see that some of the energy configurations have a higher probability of occurring than others. That's due to their greater number of microstates. Entropy is a direct measure of each energy configuration's probability. What we see is that the energy configuration in which the energy is most spread out between the solids has the highest entropy. So in a general sense, you understood what is entropy, right? So from solid to liquid, how entropy will change, right? So next discussion will derive a Nernst equation. So how uh, Nernst equation, Nernst approach to a Nernst equation, we'll discuss in our next class. Thank you.